We will now join a show in progress across the veil. Important. I know that when I left Colorado and I moved to Alaska, it was very much in divine order. It was the Fourth of July weekend. We got I got this thing about to look online and to find out about a center in Alaska. And as I found out about this center in Alaska, I knew that I was to go to the center. And that was the Fourth of July weekend. The eleventh of July, I was on an airplane flying to that location, relocating, and my husband and my daughter were following in their car in the cars bringing items and they it, they came up that took them about 30 days to make the, the journey in the manner that they had to make it to come up but it's that following that it's that listening to that guidance of how everything will come together then when it came time for me to leave Kodiak I knew it was time for me to leave Kodiak I had lost my husband while I was there and everywhere I went I was getting remembrances and reminders and I was not healing within myself and it was because of that non-healing because of needing to remove myself from that space I knew oh it's time it's time for me to relocate I was able to purchase a home my son and I found this little itty bitty teeny tiny ad in the local newspaper we called the folks who flew over on like the evening airplane which got in like at 11 p.m. caught a motel room we met them at 8 in the morning looked at the house signed the paperwork and went back home and the next weekend came over on the ferry with some of our belongings and we took a couple trips back and forth to move our stuff and still then I flew back and forth to work out of the office because I had a commitment that I had to fulfill which was fine because it worked out very well it gave us an opportunity to start the office and to do the work that we were to do in um, Wasilla area as well. And then, as I was sharing with the caller I was visiting with, we uh, got, um, I kept hearing Durango, Colorado. I kept hearing Durango, Colorado. You need to go to Durango, Colorado. And I love Colorado. Colorado has been a very, very special place for me in my heart for much of my entire life. When I was <laughs> when I was three years old, I would look at my mother and I would tell my mother, I'm going to live in, in the mountains of Colorado. And I, and I just, it's been a calling to me. And I also said I was going to live in Alaska, which I have. And anyhow, as that time came in and I kept hearing, you need to go to Durango, you need to go to Durango, I all of a sudden became aware of the opportunity to take part in um, a, a fair, a festival, an expo. So I contacted them, I got the booth and came down and one of my friends flew over from Florida and we met a friend in Denver and we actually drove down, had a blast, my son was with us as well, and we got here and my son and I both looked at each other and we said this is where we're to move, this is where we're to take the new, to open another office, to open a new office. And the simplicity of it as it came together is that we, I looked in the newspaper and I said, okay, if I'm going to come down, I have to have a place to live. The very first person that I called, the very first opportunity presented itself to us in the perfect manner because I knew my daughter and her children would be coming as well. It actually ended up being an exact situation like we had in Alaska of a home with a mother-in-law suite attached. And boom, there we were. We were all set. We had a place to come to down here. And that was the end part of um, August, September, um, end of September. And October 15th, we had everything loaded up. We had found um, tenants for the house, and the office is now being run by a very capable um, person handling the situation. And everything is just in divine order. When you allow yourself to be open, and I share this whole story with you, and the process that happens when you're going through this, because it's so important to listen and to get out of our own way, because sometimes we'll actually step into our own way and miss an opportunity and miss a window that's opening up. Now, on the other hand, if we go too soon, we run into blocks and barricades, and that's where it's using that divine wisdom. That's where it's using that divine intervention, hearing the messages, hearing what they're saying. For example, with that listener that I was um, speaking with, they were not necessarily telling me to tell her to slow down, wait a minute, don't go quite so fast. If they would have, I would have said to her, yeah, you're probably right, you need to give it a little bit more time. But she 
she needs to put that action into motion. And that's just, you know, that's how it happens. That's how we begin to receive our blessings. Same thing when you're out putting resumes out and applying for jobs. That was another question of a couple of our callers. How do I bring that into how do I bring that into play? How do I help that to manifest? What do I need to do? Listen to the guidance that's within yourself. Listen to the words that are coming from that higher vibration, from that higher source that's giving me excuse me. Excuse me. Woke up with a bit of a tickle this morning. Listen to that inner guidance. Listen to that inner voice that is saying, mm, maybe do this, maybe do that. Or don't go here or don't go there. Allow yourself to hear and to really listen to that. I know there was a time I was asking on some advertising that I was per, um, uh, preparing to do, and as I was doing this, and I was like, okay, guys, I need to hear what it is that you would like for me to do that's going to help bring this message to those that need to hear, that's going to help open the windows of opportunities for others. And immediately they started giving me these thoughts, and I could have I could have sat there and I could have thought, oh, this is just something April's thinking of. This is just something April's dreaming about, and, and this is how she wants it to be and how that to be. But when I really got a hold of it and said, wait a minute, no, 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 April, you don't just happen to think that way. You just don't actually happen to have those thought processes on your own. That's the key, the test. That's the key to what you want to think about as you're asking those questions is, is it something that I would normally just think of or decide I want to do on my own? Or is it something that I'm being guided and directed to do by an outside source, by, an, uh, by, my, by the spirits, by the angels, by my guides, by my teachers? Whoever it is that you work with, whoever you, your, your spirit guide. When you're connecting with those and when you're hearing that call, when you're hearing that direction, follow that direction. Follow that call and know that as you do, it's, that's when the windows of opportunity are really going to open up for you because you're listening to the divine order within that. <clears throat> pushing the river and pushing the envelope is not going to make it happen, but flowing with it and allowing yourself to flow in that journey is the, the best way to do it. Sure. To find out more about Across the Veil, April Lugo, and White Wolf Enterprise, go to www.whitewolfenterprise.com. May your life be blessed with love, light, and healing.